Hey writer friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Holly. I'm a writer aspiring to be a published author. And in today's video, I will be doing the fourth video in my self-editing series all about line edits. If you want to know how to do developmental edits and how to prepare for beta readers, I did a couple videos on that for the first part of the series, so I will link those videos down below. So I am so excited to do this video because I was working so hard in November and December doing line edits for the Celestial Code. So I've got my handy little cheat sheet right here. This is my line editing checklist, and it will be up by the time this video comes out. It will be up on my website for my newsletter subscribers. Um, on the members page so go ahead and check that out i know when i launched my website it was like a coming soon thing because i wanted to have this video out first but now it will be up for you guys to use first things first you guys you must do developmental edits before you do line edits I know that it's kind of tempting to want to nitpick all of the grammar mistakes and you know all the little times where you see this is a run on sentence this and that like don't worry about that you want to go through the big picture items first because if you are doing all of these nitty gritty picky edits and then you end up scrapping that scene or changing that plot point then you did all that work for nothing so make sure that when you're getting to the stage you have already done that so the things that I look for when I am doing line edits I kind of of do this a little bit in the developmental edits but only if I'm you know really bothered by it but it's looking at the show versus tell where are the instances where I'm telling versus showing so they looked mad or they looked happy and it's like well what does that look like you know so that you want to describe that out so I really focus on using the emotion thesaurus to make sure that I have those points really shown in the manuscript and that will make it stronger I have used this thing to death, the Emotion Thesaurus. And actually, I don't know if you saw on my social media, but I was part of the cover reveal for the second edition, which has like 55 more emotions, which is amazing. I pre-ordered it right away when I was able to, and I think it's gonna be released in um, February, maybe like the third week of February. So I'll link that down below as well if you wanna pre-order it. They're also having a free webinar for the people that pre-order, so it's just a win-win. So the other thing I do when I'm looking at the quality of my writing for line edits is I look at if I have any purple prose. So any times the lines are just, the sentences are running on forever, the paragraphs are huge, and I'm just saying the same thing over again just in a different way because I want to pretty it up and make it kind of poetic, but that doesn't really do anything for the manuscript and just weighs it down and feels really heavy. And sometimes it can get into eye roll territory. So try to avoid those instances where you're just kind of flowering up, you know, whatever you're describing and can you say it in fewer words and clean up that sentence. And looking at those sentences, you wanna look at both sentence and word structure. You wanna vary your sentence lengths. Is this paragraph just full of all of long sentences? That paragraph is gonna feel really, really long. Um, but you might wanna use that when you're describing you know, a setting. And But you do wanna kinda mix up some shorter and long sentences in that. Whereas if you're doing a fight scene, you wanna keep those sentences short. You don't wanna bog it down. You wanna keep the action going and the tension with shorter sentences. And of course, you can also shorten up the sentences by really just making your sentences more concise and condensing those words, taking out any filler words that don't belong. So one of my favorite examples of this like sentence word structure is this scene where someone's looking down and I wanted to convey like just how far up the person was. So I had that they were looking down and then the next paragraph down next paragraph and down and down so it's like you're reading down 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 and it's kind of you looking down with that person so that's a way for you to kind of vary those word and sentence structures to convey that emotion or that feeling or that scene okay guys so i have a whole slew of examples from this recent edit of the celestial code that i will be giving you to show you how i line edit and take out crutch words filler words and tighten up my sentences but before that i do want to say the resources that i've used when i'm doing that so the first one is when I want to replace one word with a stronger word. And so I use either thesaurus.com or wordhippo.com. And those are really important because, you know, you can't say 
someone ran all the time. Like ran is very weak. You can say that they rushed or they dodged or they sprinted and that will convey exactly what is happening. Ran is more generic. So you want to find something that's more specific and will pack more of a punch. Um, along with Word Hippo and thesaurus.com, I also use the, the Writers Helping Writers Active Verbs list. Um, so that one, you know, they have appear. Instead of saying just appear, you can say show, flash, materialize. Instead of ask, you can say request, question, inquire, solicit, plead. So this one's really great because it just kind of brings up all these things that you can't just think about on your own. Another thing I look at, which you'll see in the examples, is like if I omit this word or this sentence or this part of the sentence, will the sentence still make sense? And that is super important because something that I learned from one of my critique partners was that like words are money and every time you take a word away, like you're getting money. Like that's what you have to think of. You have to think of it as a game and taking out as many words as you can is winning so it's kind of weird to think that like you did i know it's hard like you you think like you did all this hard work to write those words down and now you want to take them away like it's kind of scary but you will see the difference how much better it sounds how much better it flows and how much better it will read okay so what exactly are crutch words slash filler words those are words that are unnecessarily used or overly used in people's writing and i use the writers helping writers.com resources which is by the people who made the emotion thesaurus and so they have this free download um, on that website. So I will link their website down below. Um, but it is a crutch words list. They have unspecific words, words that overgeneralize, commonly repeated words, um, repeated actions or body parts. Um, and then I did also add a um, couple other words that I got from other lists. So you can feel free to kind of like, because there was a lot of different like crutch filler word lists that I found, but I found that this one was the most helpful. And then I kind of added my own as well. So if you're going to use this crutch words list, which I recommend, I will also tell you the other words that I did add, which were little, of, but, be or being, might or maybe, so, um, a bit or a lot, um, then, not um, <laughs> rather and somewhat. And then I kind of checked for, you know, making sure I wasn't using too many pronouns. So she, he, or they, I didn't get as nitty gritty as this, but they kind of recommend that there shouldn't be more than four to 15% of those pronouns in a chapter. And there should be less than 30% of sentences that start with a pronoun. Oh man, this is going to be cringy. So I'm going to pull this up on your screen so you can see it too. But I've pulled up all of the examples that I pulled from the Celestial Code's fourth draft. And those sentences, I'm like, oh my gosh, those are so cringy. But it's nice to see, like, you can make it beautiful. So in this example, I was saying he was leaning up against it. And I was going through the word up. And I'm like, if I take out up, does this still make sense? He was leaning against it. Yes, it does. Totally makes sense. So that tightens it up a little bit and I get rid of one of those filler words. So I loved finding this example because it actually put in an adverb. So I originally said in any normal situation and I was thinking about it. I'm like, that just sounds super wordy, but I can just say normally and it makes sense. So, you know, don't be afraid to use adverbs. Yes, you don't want to overdo them, but there is a time and place to use them. And in this situation, I felt like it was more important for me to cut it down to the one word with the adverb as opposed to drawing it out with the first part. Then I had written with pinched brows and lips pursed. I realized that was inconsistent because I had the verb before the noun. Um, and then the noun before the verb. So then I changed that to with pinched brows and pursed lips. So this is a, an example of looking at consistency in your writing. Next example, I wrote, we have a meeting later tonight to come up with new strategies. And I was like, this sounds super wordy. Um, so I just said, we have a meeting tonight to develop new strategies. So that was where I probably was looking at the word up and I'm like, to come up with, I'm like, okay, there's gotta be something better than that and develops the word. So that's an example of using a stronger verb. Rum blew out all the breath he had, squeezing out every last bit of air from his lungs. 
oh my goodness, that is super wordy. So I don't remember which one I went with, but I could have taken it one or two ways. I could have said either Rem blew out all the air from his lungs or Rem exhaled all the breath he had. So I kind of took, you know, those two sentences, think about it. They're saying the exact same thing. So just use one. In this example, she mumbled something foul under her breath. My beta, <laughs> she caught this and it was amazing because she was like, Oh, this is unless, unless Lucci's squawking at someone and I'm like, squawking? Oh, so this is a way of like, really, these line by lines will help you look, you have to scrutinize each word because Grammarly or Microsoft Word is not going to catch up that foul is wrong because it's spelled right, but it's not the right word. Um, what is it, like a homonym um, for foul? So. I changed that to she mumbled something foul under her breath. She didn't mumble a chicken under her breath, I hope not. Next example, he feared his phone would slip and tumble all the way to the bottom of the stairs. Woo, that is wordy AF. Um, so I was like, I definitely can say this in a shorter way. So I wrote, he feared his phone would tumble to the bottom of the stairs. You think you can understand that sentence a lot better? Yeah, I think so too. Next one, she walked the length of the hallway down, whatever. Um, so that one I was like, okay, she walked the length of the hallway down. Down implies she's walking the length of the hallway. So I just said she walked down the hallway. Next one, it's not enough to have these memories of you. I changed that to these memories of you aren't enough. So that's a way where I kind of switched the structure of the sentence so that I could make it more concise and they both mean the same thing. So that's it for those examples. I hope you found them really helpful. So once I have gone through the line edits for a whole chapter, then I will read that chapter out loud because that will help me catch mistakes that I didn't catch when I was just simply reading it. So sometimes I can get a little tongue tied while reading a sentence. I realize that some dialogue is a little awkward, so I will kind of reword it. And then sometimes I do catch things where I'm like, oh, I did use that word earlier in the page. I should probably change it. But I felt pretty good with my recent line edits where I wasn't catching too much when I was reading it and I was just able to enjoy it. Another thing that you can check while you're doing your line edits and you can also check when you're reading it out loud is inconsistent actions so if someone stood up but they never sat down or they like sat down three times but never stood up like things like that or held someone's hand but then they started holding something in that same hand and they never let go so you want to be on a lookout for those inconsistencies and when all of that is done then you're almost home so I like to do one last pass of that chapter. I will throw it into the Hemingway editor app, but I just use the website. It looks for very complicated and long sentences, which I don't bother with too much because I usually don't have too many of those. And it does make sure that your adverb count is below the recommended amount. It also ensures that you're below the recommended amount for using passive voice too. So they don't say never to use passive voice. It's just, you gotta be smart about it. Then once all of that is done, then I throw that chapter into the Grammarly app or the Grammarly website and just make sure that the grammar is correct and tightened up. It's kind of annoying because it catches all of my fantasy words, but if you're not writing fantasy, then that is a plus for you guys. So I like see all this red and I freak out, but then I realize like, oh no, actually my grammar's fine in this chapter. All right, you guys, so that's it for this video. I hope that you found these tips helpful. Don't forget to download your free checklist. Let me know in the comments down below where you're at in your writing stage, if you're drafting, if you're editing, if you're doing line edits, that would be really cool. And then also let everyone know any tips and tricks that you've learned about line editing that I may have missed. Oh, duh, I also totally forgot to mention that I kind of changed up my setup right now. This isn't the final version. I was just tired of like sitting in front of my computer here. So I'm like, I'm gonna shift things over and just see how that feels. But don't worry, I will be doing a whole YouTube setup revamp hopefully soon. Please give this video a thumbs up to support my channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye.